game. Coach McKinney, what can we look forward to? I think in Maryland's case, we can look for him to try to run with the ball. And of course, Duke will try to run with it. But if they do not have the break or the long pass, they're going to hold up and try to get the ball to Jeminski or whoever bat, Estes and Bell. With Jeminski inside and Banks inside for Duke and with Larry Gibson and Buck Williams inside for Maryland, we can expect quite a battle under the boards. Coach. Well, they're the leading rebounders. And of course, the thing that makes them great, not only are they great basketball players, they're great athletes too. Incidentally, we have all four of the first four leading rebounders in the ACC on view here this afternoon. And Buck Williams, a freshman, leading the conference in rebounding is quite a feat for a freshman. I think he is, and I think that Jerry Clayman would like to have him on his football team, too. He is a big Husky lad, as you will see, but up against Mike Jeminski, one of the outstanding centers, big men in the game today. And this is going to be one of Maryland's problems. They're going to have to try to help out on Jeminski because once he's able to get the ball, I don't know whether there's any defense you can play against him or not, Charlie. If they get the ball inside, as they have been successful in doing in recent games, then Jeminski and Banks... Pretty much take charge inside, so that uh, looks like the kind of uh, game we can look for today. That's our scouting report on tonight's game. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off of today's game after this message. I've been looking at all the new cars, and I'm still looking. Toyota, what do you got? The 1979 Toyota Corolla two-door sedan. The lowest-priced Toyota. You got power-assisted front disc brakes. Standard. You got McPherson strut front suspension. Standard. You got it. Toyota. Toyota, Toyota Corolla. All small cars should have its standards. Toyota, you got it. You asked for it. You got it, Toyota. There are lots of ways to get acid indigestion when you have a headache. Sometimes it's not what you eat, but when you eat it. Sometimes it is what you eat. Sometimes it's not what or when, but how much. For all those times, take Alka-Seltzer. Listen, it's the sound of fast relief. Oh, what a relief it is! <laughs> The Holly Farms Scholarship Award, a $1,000 grant, is presented through the office of the ACC Commissioner to the School of the Outstanding Player or Players of the Game, is chosen by the game announcer. So, later on tonight, uh, this afternoon, Bones and I will be choosing the Holly Farms Player of the Game. These are the officials for today's game. Jim Hernjack is the man in the center with the basketball. On his right is uh, David Dodge. To the right, as you look at the picture, and to the left is Jim Wright. Officials assigned here by the ACC and of course you know who that is that's the Duke Blue Devil I haven't seen the Maryland Terrapin today but he appears in all home games introduction to the starting lineup okay let's pick up the introduction of the players King North Carolina number 33 Kenny Denard at center, a 6'9 senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 32, Larry Gibson. A 6'11 junior from Monroe, Connecticut, number 43, Mike Jominski. At the guards, a 6'4 freshman from Philadelphia, number 15, Reggie Jackson. For Duke, a 6'2 junior from River Forest, Illinois, number 21, Bob Bender. A 6'7 sophomore from Baltimore, number 25, Ernest Graham. A 6'5 senior from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 34, Jim Spinarkle. Maryland is coached by Mr. Lefty Drizel and Duke by Mr. Bill Foster. Starting for the Blue Devils at home, Gene Banks and Kenny Denard in the front, along with Mike Jeminski, Jim Spenarkel, and Bob Bender in the backcourt. Bender's a point man, will handle the ball for most of the contest when the Blue Devils are on the offense. Albert King and Buck Williams up front, along with Larry Gibson at center for the Terrapins, and Ernest Graham and Reggie Jackson in the backcourt. Ernest Graham's one of the more versatile players in the ACC. 6'7", 195 pounds, a sophomore, averaging better than 19 points a ball game, averaging three rebounds a game. Ernest Graham plays front court and backcourt balls with equal facility. Well, it's 6'7", he can play both ways, and like you said, 
his agility is what makes it possible, and it makes it difficult on an assignment like Bob Bender. If he catches him, then Graham can take him in the hole and put him at a big disadvantage. But, of course, I know Spinarch will match up when they go man for man, but I'm looking for every defense you can pick up today. It's February. <laughs> okay. They, you mean they change a little bit as the season goes along? I guarantee you that they'll use it all out. All teams will from here to the tournament. Gibson on the left, number 32. Jaminski on the right. Number 43, and it is going to be controlled by Bender of the Blue Devils. And the Blue Devils start on the offense as Bender moves down court. Reggie Jackson picks him up, and Bender gives it to Denard on the right side. King on him, Spinark on outside. How about what is Duke trying to do now? Trying to get an inside bow? They'd Mike like to, but the they'll shot. take that jumper if it goes. Of course, Maryland will use it a man for man. You see, they like to break as we were talking about. Albert King got the rebound. Williams has it knocked away by Bender, and he's got a man down court. Had Denard down court. Couldn't see him, didn't get the ball to him. Denard's just a hustle. He may not hustle any more than the rest of them, but he certainly looks like it. That's Kaminsky from inside, and he hits it. And you saw the attempt that time by Williams to help out, but he couldn't do it. First score of the ball game, they get it to Kaminsky about 10 feet away, and it's 2 to nothing. The Blue Devils lead 19 17 to play in the contest. Jackson gets King, doesn't get away. Denard picks it up. This is a thing that Maryland cannot afford to do, and that's to throw it away as they have for two straight times. Denard will inside to Kaminsky, and he is fouled. Foul is on Buck Williams. That is his first. 6'8", 215 pound freshman from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, leading the conference in rebounding in his freshman year, averaging 10 and a half rebounds a game. Doesn't score a lot, doesn't shoot a lot. Has an excellent shooting percentage, as you will note later on. Banks uh, to Spinarco, to Bender. They've got to time it so that uh, Jaminski is in position when they're trying to throw the ball in, and in instead of being in between a pass. Domensky got inside again and got it around Gibson and got his two points and it's four to nothing. The Blue Devils lead with 18.45 to play. That's what makes a great basketball player. He made a move in. I haven't seen him make all year. Graham taking a shot after Spinarco hit the deck. Banks has a long pass. Bones was talking about the bender this time and he makes it in. They're going to look for it, Charlie. They haven't had it. They're getting blown out. They're going to call a timeout. And Coach uh, Lefty Rizal immediately slows things down. There's a timeout on the court with a score. Duke 6, Maryland 7. Played just a minute and 28 seconds here, and the Blue Devils lead six to nothing. And Maryland called a quick timeout. Coach Lefty Drizel wanted to set some different defense. I'm sure Bones will see what it is when they come back down the floor as Ernest Graham brings it inbounds to Reggie Jackson, and Bob Bender waits to pick up Jackson, who moves front court. All he wants him to do, Charlie, is to get that first basket, and after that, the rest come easy. That's Gibson all by himself. Tip play by Banks, but it is tipped up and in anyway by Buck Williams. That's what you call going to the board, and that's the thing that he needs to do. Now, what's the help out that they're going to give down here on Jaminski if they can? Banks sends it back outside. Violation underneath. Well, that's two errors to one. Maryland's leading in that department. Maryland has lost the ball a couple of times, had a couple of turnovers, one to the Blue Devils. Six to two, the Blue Devils lead. 18 minutes left to play first half here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. We'll Jackson see what this means. Jackson raised his hand, made a circle, and they were starting to do a whirl. And that's what it means. That's what it means. And Buck Williams has got four points, and the score is six to uh, four, the Blue Devils lead. Started to say Cameron Indoor Stadium, named after Eddie Cameron. The Spinarco drives and is fouled as he throws. That one is evidently on Ernest Graham. Yep. First person on Ernest Graham, second team foul against the Terrapins, and uh, moving to the free throw line will be Jim Spinarco. He'll have a couple of opportunities. You know, Charlie, the thing that makes uh, Spinarco go is not so much that he's fast, but that he's deceptive, and he makes a step and a half as quick as anybody in basketball, and he lulls you to sleep and then slips by you. Watch, this will happen during the game on a give and go. He is a 72% free throw shooter, and he hit one for two that time. It is seven to four, the Blue Devils lead. 17.40 to play as Graham will bring the front court. Had uh, Albert King alone on the side, but didn't want to get it to him. Jackson moving back outside. Duke, uh, how about the They're going to go 1-3-1 one, one zone now. They're changing up. They were successful the last time down, so they changed up to a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Duke's in. Williams out in the corner. Jaminski on him. It's tough to shoot over Jaminski. Graham tried to get it inside. Batted away by Denard and picked up by Spinarkel, who's going all the way. Smart move on Graham's part. It was foolish for him to do anything because he would have fouled him if he had, and it would only been one more point, one more foul. 17 minutes to play. Duke leads 9-4. Five-point edge for the Blue Devils as Graham works against Spinarkel. Now Jackson alone. Good move by Reggie Jackson. He gets his first bucket of the day, and it is 9-6. Blue Devils by three. 16-45 to play. Kenny Denard outside. Bender, Denard helping out outside. King guarding him. Denarco. 
Moving against Graham. Baseline move. Doubles it underneath the banks. Wouldn't go on the tap, and we've got action underneath the basket. I believe it's on key. Five, five. It's on Albert King. That is his first. That's the third personal against the Blue Devils. Both things were hot under the basket. We said they would be, and they will be again. We've got the four leading rebounders in the Atlantic Coast Conference here this afternoon. Leading the conference is Buck Williams, Mike Dominski, and Eugene Banks are second and third, respectively. Larry Gibson of the Terrapins is fourth. And here's Banks. And free throw line for the first time. On top of that, Charlie, you think uh, Spinarkel is 6'5", Denard's about 6'6", six, six, and so the only person out there that I could talk to would be Bender, I believe. <laughs> Reggie Jackson's about 6'5". First point for Gene Banks. 10 to 6, Blue Devils. 11 to 6, Duke leads Maryland. The Blue Devils are 3 for 4 from the free throw line. They try to trap zone. A little pressure in the backcourt. Jackson, the man they want to control it. Found to Gibson underneath. That's a good pump fake by Gibson. It's 11 to 8. Blue Devils lead by 3. 16 10 to play. Bender to Jaminski inside. Over Gibson. Rebound uh, to Graham. Gibson moving against Jaminski. Puts it up and it is good and he is fouled. He made a beautiful left handed hook. He made a beautiful move going to the basket. Here's the way it looked. You see Graham going around. Now watch him dish that ball back to Gibson. Gibson takes it, makes a move on Jaminski to Jaminski's right, your left, and puts the ball up with his left hand. Beautiful move, and Jaminski fouled him. Jaminski got him with the body as he went up. It's 11 to 10. It is a tie ball game. Larry Gibson has five points. Tied at 11. Spinarco's in front of everybody. Now that's exactly what I'm talking about. If you let him get away with that long pass, it's too easy. 13-11, Duke. Five points for Jim Spinarco. Graham loose for the shot, and he's a deadly shot from outside, but he missed that one. Jackson, Graham again. Bernardo guarding Graham man to man. Graham falling away and putting it out. Jaminski's got the rebound. Looked for the long pass that time, but he didn't have anybody except Denard down court, and Denard was covered as the Terrapins covered it up that time. The Bender touches it, it's a turnover. Yep, it went back across the line. Bender says somebody else touched it, Bones, but they evidently did not. I don't believe they did. It was just one of those things that went through his hands. Sometimes a little perspiration will get you, but these two officials are talking about it. David Dodge and Jim Rife talking things over uh, to uh, see what it is. Uh, here it is. Here's the situation. Now you watch. Here's Spinarco with the ball. He passes it. Now it's a question. Did Graham hit it? If he did, then it's Duke's ball. If he didn't, and they're giving the ball to Merrill. It is Maryland's ball, says Jim Hernjack as he comes out. It's uh, Jim Hernjack, the referee in this game. Incidentally, the officials wearing the type uh, whistles used in the ACC as Hernjack talks to Bill Foster. The officials wearing the type whistles that are used. There's Lefty Drizell also talking. The type of whistles which stop the clock when they are blown through pressure and electronic action. No delay between the blowing of the whistle and an official timer stopping the clock. Reggie Jackson with the ball. Bender is starting to move up to cover him as Jackson indicates the play pattern he wants. 13-11, Blue Devils lead, 15-15 to play. Charlie, that's Gibson shooting over Jaminski and hitting again. That last uh, call there was considered a jump ball situation because they both touched it and went to the backcourt. Supposedly it was given to Merlin because it was no timeout. Foul is on Ernest Graham. That is his second. He fouls Spinarco as Spinarco drove the baseline. Here it is. All right, let's watch this. Spinarco's driving and Graham's trying to catch up with him. Now watch this. Down on top of him, he came. Score is tied at 13. That's Jaminski. Jaminski. Tipped that time, hit by Gibson. Gibson partially blocked that shot. Gibson, the leading shot blocker on the Maryland club at 6'9", 200 pounder. Denard. Manning comes into the ball game for the Terrapins. Greg Manning, number 10, 6'1", 166 pound sophomore from Steel from Pennsylvania. He replaces Graham in the Terrapin lineup. Jaminski with a rebound, looking for the long pass to Denard. King's cutting off Denard. Jaminski had to wait for some help. Bank starts his move to Denard. I said Jaminski had to wait for help. Denard was the man who had to wait for help. Foul called on that play. Foul was on Albert Banks, King. Banks passed it under to Denard. Now watch Denard as he goes up. And King, of course, not only gets a part of the ball, he gets a part of Denard. So Denard will be at the free throw line. First time this afternoon. He has two opportunities. Score is tied at 13. 
14-32 to play in the ballgame. Kenny Denard from King, North Carolina, Dendard South Stokes High School. It's the first one. Remember another fine Duke ball player from King, Bobby Joe Harris. Remember him? No, King, I North to, Carolina. I tried to recruit him. He said he wanted to study universal law. <laughs> he studied basketball and did very well. 14-13, the Blue Devils lead as Denard gets one of two. Manning with the shot. Manning is a scoring guard. He's averaging almost 11 points a ball game, and he puts his team in front for the first time today. Maryland leads 15-14. Banks goes in and drives right away. I think that possibly Gibson made a mistake in touching the ball out of bounds. When he did, he was the man who charged with forcing it out of bounds. It was, Spinarkle, it was off Spinarkle had he not touched it. 15-14. Maryland leads first time today. Of course, the Maryland coach left with Rizal. Played basketball himself here at Duke University. Bill is coming into the ball game. Taylor Baldwin preparing to come in. He's got Morrison has come in the ball game for the Blue Devils. Harold Morrison. Blue Devils have their blue team in the ball game. As a matter of fact, from the side that was Steve Gray taking the shot. Blue Devils with five new players in the contest and Maryland leading at 15 to 14. Jackson, Albert King, to Manning. Rebound to Scott Getch. And John Harrell moving it into the front court. Harrell and Getch, Jim Sutter, Steve Gray, who has the ball here, and Harold Morrison in the lineup now for the Blue Devils. That's Morrison making the move. Sutter made the recovery. 15-14, Maryland leads. 13-35 to play in the first half. Sutter's well outside. Sutter tried to pass it underneath. Bill Nee made the interception. Bill Nee in the lineup for Maryland, along with Taylor Baldwin, Reggie Jackson, Greg Manning, Albert King. That's Bill Nee being hounded. Manning brings it out of the corner back to King. Way across to Jackson. Maryland with a 15-14 lead, trying to move a little pattern now. That's King. I think Bill Nee gets the tip in. 17-14, the Blue Devil, uh, the Blue Devils trail by three. Gray from the corner. First points of the game for Steve Gray. 17-16. Maryland lead is one. 12 and a half minutes left to play in the first half. If Gray can shoot that foul shot and come in to a certain injured man, he can certainly shoot from there. Manning tried to drive the baseline. Little contact, but no foul. King from the free throw line. Not through cleanly, but through. First field goal of the afternoon for Albert King. It's 1916 Maryland lead. John Harrell now directing the Duke offense. Sutter on the right wing and Gray on the left wing. That's his own defense by Maryland, a 3-2. It'll go into a 2-1-2. It's a 1-2-2 right now. They just do whatever they want to, and that's a matchup. That's Gray. Looking back toward the, the bench to get his instructions. Harold moving over in front of there, right in front of the Duke bench. And Morrison making the move. Good block by Baldwin. Sutter picked it up in the corner. This yep. is the Blue Devils call their blue team, Bones. They five new players who give the starters a rest. Gray. Gonna drive the baseline. He's a tough basketball player. 19-18, Maryland's lead is down to one. Jackson with some pressure on him. Baldwin tried to get it underneath. Out of bounds off the hands of Scott Gates. And a big hand for the blue team as they leave the floor. The starters come back in. Denard, Banks, DeMarco, Bender, and uh, Kaminsky for the Blue Devils. Now there's a timeout on the court with a score. Maryland 19, Duke 18. Group insurance? can't run a business without it. I used to think it was a necessary evil, the expense, the paperwork, but the pilot knew it was bugging me. Pilot Life's group specialists took over a lot of the details. Questions get answered fast. Benefits paid fast for a lot less than I thought. Group insurance? No problem, with a little help from the pilot. Hey! <laughs> pilot helps you through life. I don't know you, but I know what that is. That's a Hardee's Big Roast Beef Sandwich. My all-time favorite food. Sliced thin, tender, tall and juicy, and it smells so good. 
and I am so hungry. Let's go, runner. I'll be back for the French fries. Hardee's, best eating in town, up and down and all around. This telecast is presented by authority of the Atlantic Coast Conference and the C.D. Chesley Company, and any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this program have been approved and contracted for by the C.D. Chesley Company. Maryland leads 19 to 18. Let me tell you what Steve Gray did. He averages 1.4 points a game. He got two baskets, four points in the brief time he was in the ball game for the blue team to give Duke a lift. I Maryland leads 19 to 18. I don't think he had the two shots either, Chuck. That's all he took, and that's all he made. Morley in the ball game at the at a guard position for Maryland. There's Morley. Dutch Morley to Manning in the corner. Manning tried to pass it underneath. Bounced it off. Jaminski put up by Gibson. Wouldn't go in. Jaminski got the rebound. Banks in the corner. Monarco working outside. Denard's on the left wing. Denard's on the right wing. Banks and uh, Jaminski underneath. Jaminski and Banks both getting good motion as Banks comes back outside. This How about the Maryland defense? It's a, it's a zone defense, and that's the reason that uh, Duke was not playing what you call a point guard situation. A beautiful pass. Beautiful pass by Jaminski, by uh, Banks, who's got 53 assists, and Bernard got the basket, and Duke immediately gets the ball back again. He's knocked out of Bernard's hands. Greg Manning on the way by just clicked at it and knocked it out again in his hand, but he gets it right back again. So it is 20 to 19. The Blue Devils lead the 10th, 20 to play in the first half. The Blue Devils right with the ball. The difference right now is Maryland played four errors and Duke has made only one. Bender to the north. Banks to the Mexican. Good pass again by Banks and blocked underneath by Larry Gibson, but he committed a foul as it one. You can tell these fellows have played together before because they certainly know where the other man is. Watch this move as Denard passes it over to Banks, and Banks with just a moment's hesitation passes to Jaminski, and there you see Gibson make the foul. That is the sixth team foul against Maryland. Duke has one team foul. Jaminski at the free throw line for a couple. His team leads 2019. And it remains that way. John Bilney in the ballgame, number 50, is the man who recovered that ball for Maryland. He's in the contest now, having replaced uh, Ernest uh, Larry Gibson. So Jaminski gets one for two. He's got five points in the contest. 21-19, Blue Devils lead by the equivalent of a field goal. Beautiful shot up and in by Graham. That's his first basket of the day. Only Graham could make a shot like that. He wanted to pass it. Spinarco, Ernest Graham guarding him. Jaminski is alone for 15 feet. Seven points now for Mike Jaminski. 23-21, Blue Devils lead. 9.40 to play. That's in the first half. Defense, defense, Dutch Morley working against Bob Bender. Man for man defense by Duke. They're wanting to play that more and more. It's ended underneath for Larry Gibson from batted away from him. Spinarco from the free throw line. They got him up seven points. Tell him they got out of the floor before Bellow was able to set up. That's what gave him the easy shot from the foul line. The Devils lead by four, 25, 21. Graham. Lost control of the ball, just uh, fumbled it. Spinarco picked it up, but uh, Jim Hernjack stops the action. Somebody kicked it. Spinarco kicked it out of the lead. Hernjack indicates that somebody got a foot against it, and it uh, was a Duke player. Probably Spinarco. Let's take a look at it. Let's see. Let's watch the move. You see Graham go in. He's going to lose the ball, and Banks and Spinarco are right there to pick yep. that thing up. Spinarco is going to pick it up, and he's the man that uh, kicked it. Sutter's coming in the ballgame for Denard for the Blue Devils. Jim Sutter, 6'7", 190-pound sophomore from East Point, Georgia. That's Morley working against Vince Taylor, who's in the ballgame for the Blue Devils also. Graham driving underneath. Well, Graham didn't make it, but Gibson did. He's got nine points in the contest. It is 25-23. Blue Devils lead by two. Monarco against Manning. Lost it. Buck Williams picked it up. Graham from well outside. Didn't now, hit anything but the bottom of the basket. If they let him get started, he's liable to hit 10 in a row. It's tied at 25, and he's got four points. That's Taylor all the way in on the freshman score. Never let a man go to the baseline. You do not get any help back. 27 25, Blue Devils by two. 8 15 to play. That's Graham again off balance. Banks got the rebound, went up and sort of waited there for it until it came down again. He needs some help, and he gets it from Taylor. 
Williams lets Taylor go by because Morley's going to pick him up. Jaminski against Gibson. Over Gibson. Gibson's got the rebound. 27-25. Blue Devils by two. Maryland has the ball from a chance to tie or go ahead. Morley will back toward the center line, as you see. Manning was by himself on the baseline. The basket's good, and he's fouled by Gene Banks. That's first personal against Gene Banks. Second team foul against the Blue Devils. Manning second basket. He's got four points now. And we're going to take time out to talk things over. There's a timeout on the court with the score. Duke 27, Maryland 27. Earlier this afternoon, you saw Virginia defeat Wake Forest 83 to 74. The Cavaliers now five and three in the ACC, and Wake Forest drops to two and six in the Atlantic Coast Conference. As you see, the Blue Devil team, Coach Bill Foster in that colorful plaid sport coat. Charlie, he's had that coat out on now ever since he won. <laughs> when he started the winning streak, he started to wear that coat. And he may be a member of the uh, Coat Throwers the coach, uh, coach Association. I can't get that out. But he has to wear an expensive coat and throw it after the game. <laughs> okay, folks. I'm glad you explained that. Manning will be at the free throw line with the one opportunity. He has a chance for the three-point play. Can't put his team ahead and does. The Terrapins lead 28-27, 7.40 to play. First half of the contest. Bernard waiting for help. Gets it from Spinarco as he comes to one court. Banks outside to Gaminski inside over Gibson who almost blocked it. Graham up. Spinarco put it up one time and it was thrown a foul underneath. Foul is on Larry Gibson. That is his second. Watch this move. Jaminski went up in the air, almost got the basket. Spinarco kicking himself for not putting it high enough up. But as he goes up this time, you can see Gibson get him right on the arm. Spinarco is one for two from the line. He has seven points. Make that eight. <laughs> Scores tied at 28. Banks moving into position along the foul line, along the lane. Spinarco now has nine points, and the Blue Devils lead 29 28 with 7 20 to play in the first half. Morley, Taylor, dogging him all the way. Got a little screen from Gibson. Manning outside. And Morley. Morley getting it to Gibson. Finally made a good move and got around Jominski. Oh, they thought he walked with him, but he didn't move his pivot foot. That's 11 points for Larry Gibson, 30 29, Maryland lead. Jominski's turn. Boys for Dominski, 31-30. The Blue Devils lead as they get it right back. Taylor driving for the basket. Over, 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 over. Now they got to be careful. They go down, take a good shot, get back in the ball game. 33-30. Blue Devils lead. Six and a half minutes left to play. Manning starts to drive the lane. He would have had to go around Dominski and didn't have room for that. Manning goes this time. Dishes it off to Buck Williams who ducks it. Six points for Williams and Banks is on the floor. He doesn't understand why he didn't draw a charge himself. Taylor with the ball outbounds. Bernardo. Let's take a look at that. What's the move now? You see Morley going dish off, and you saw what happened. It's been 52, which is Buck Williams went up in the air and mashed that ball through. That Banks to Taylor underneath. Another fine pass. That is three good assists for Banks in this ball game. Duke is slipping behind Maryland's zone and slipping behind their man for man because they're getting them to turn their head. Foul called on the Blue Devils. It'll go over. That one's on Jim Spinarco. That's his first. Third team foul against the Blue Devils. 35-32. The Blue Devils lead 550 to play in the first half. They're in a zone, Duke is. They're trying to play a 1-2-2 two, two or a matchup. Honest to goodness, they're all matchup. 90% of the time, they're matchups. Graham got Manning loose in the corner. Jaminski with a rebound. Banks to bring it front court. Williams came across to cut him out because Banks looked like he might go all the way. Bernard. Bernard's got it back up and in. He wasn't satisfied, wouldn't be denied. This is where you make arrows when you're in too big a hurry. 37-32, Blue Devils lead. Spinarco from outside. 11 points for Jim Spinarco. 39-32, Blue Devils by seven. 
Coach Brazil is trying to get his team's attention. He wants to call timeout. He didn't get it. It's going to cost two points. Maybe three points as Bernard is fouled and he's going in. That's seven points for Kenny DeMarth. This is something to behold. You see Denard as he starts down that floor with everything he's got. And you see Graham after him as hard as he can. And you see this. Now watch this ball. Round and round she goes. And where she stops, nobody knows but the bottom of the net. Now there's a timeout on the court with the score. Duke 41, Maryland 32. My Charlie loves chicken. So I buy nothing but the best. Holly Farms. I know it's fresh, always tender, and it tastes so good. Hi, Mom. Hi, Charlie. Hi, dear. Hi, Big Charlie. Holly Farms chicken. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. We're nothing but the best will do. Nothing but the best for you. Holly Farms. Nothing but the best for you. Don't your Charlies deserve the best? 41-32 lead for the Blue Devils. 4.56 to play in this contest. As uh, uh, Coach Brazell, I want you to mention a moment ago, was trying to get his team to call a timeout, and nobody saw him. He couldn't get the timeout. In the meantime, Duke stole the ball and scored and moved into that nine point lead that they hold out. Charlie could easily have been the difference at four points because he got that timeout. They might have called, got a basket, and then Duke forgot one on the other hand. Again, okay, there's a timeout on the court with a score Duke 41, Maryland 32. Blue Devil lead, nine point lead. They have spurted as they are so capable of doing with, with such fine scores, Bones. Well, they'll blow this thing right open if Maryland is not careful, and this is the reason that Lefty wanted that extra time to talk to him. At this point, before 56 to play, Maryland has eight turnovers. This is unofficial, and Duke has only two. Well, the Duke pressure has caused the turnovers. Duke's been playing an aggressive man-to-man -man defense most of the way, and they have put on pressure in the backcourt on occasion. They've run the drone trap on occasion in the backcourt, and they have forced some of the turnovers, Bob. That's right. They've made it possible, there's no doubt. Denard couldn't make the three-point play. He's got seven points, and that's his average per game. We're still in the first half. 41-32, Blue Devils lead. Blue Devils on the zone defense. They're trying to play a 1-3-1 with Jaminski in the middle. Rod, the uh, alley-oop to Buck Williams, and let's see off whom it went out of bounds. Evidently out of bounds off of Banks, who was there to break it up. Williams had it, no doubt. Slipped out of his hands. Manning will make the inbounds play. Gibson outside to King. Manning driving baseline. Gibson couldn't hold the pass. Long pass to Denard. Two spinoffs. That's the thing you have to watch for. They go in the length of the floor. You got to get back. 11 point lead for the Blue Devils. 43 32. 4 20 to play. 13 points for Jim Spinoffs. Here's a situation where Bones, I think, Maryland needs to be a little patient. Try to get some of it back. There's Jackson. He's open for the shot. Had a good shot, couldn't make it. Banks picks it up. There's a long pass. Bernard, and he fly. He looked like a tight end and had just gone deep. Jackson driving. It's 25 32, Blue Devils. Again, the long pass. And no doubt about Bernard being fouled, and that'll be three on Larry Gibson. Maryland playing right into their hands, but trying to go all the way. What this is, there's a long pass. Now, Spinarco may get it. This on this particular instant, he did get it. Tried to hook it because he knew it was going to be blocked. Spinarco will have a couple of opportunities as Dutch Morley comes into the ball game replacing Greg Manning for the Terrapins at a guard position. Morley is the leading assist maker for the Terrapins. He's got 81 assists for the season. Spinarco with two opportunities. 
14 points for Jim Spinarkle, who's averaged just 16 points a ball game. 46, 32, Blue Devils lead by those 14 points. And they've had about seven long passes, so that accounts for the 14 point lead. Here's John Filney coming into the ball game. He'll replace Larry Gibson, I'm sure. Yep, Gibson, Gibson going out. He's got three persons. So has Ernest Graham. Only three fouls against the Blue Devils. Gene Banks, Mike Domensky, Jim Spinarco, one apiece. 47-32, Duke by 15. Morley, Albert King, and Jackson and Morley. Duke's in the zone again, Bone. What they need to do is to try to cut this thing down to seven or eight points between now and halftime, and that'll be accomplishing something. The basket was by King. He's got four points. 47-34, 13-point Blue Devil lead. Bender on the move to Jaminski. Almost got a basket out of it. King has it. Reggie Jackson now to King. He just stayed up in the air a little bit to make that shot. Battle underneath for the rebound. Albert King comes out with it. They're working at it now. If they go for the good shot, they get that. Play some good defenses. 2.51 to play. 47-34, Duke leads. Filney in the corner. Jackson outside. Always just to tell my boys, protect that ball. There's not but one out there. And as long as the other team's got it, we're in a lot of trouble. Jackson, Harold, and Gray are preparing to come into the Blue Devil lineup. They're sitting down by the scorer's bench right now. King from outside. Albert King has six points. And 37, 36, 11 point Duke lead, 220 to play now. Banks away from the basket. Banks got it out of bounds. Tried to go around Williams and couldn't do so, and Maryland will have the basketball. Gray comes in, Morrison comes in, Harold comes in, Getch comes in. Harold stays in. My guess would be now that Duke will go only for a real good for a real good shot, and I know Maryland's going to do that because they're closing the gap a little bit. Jim Sutter's the fifth man for the Blue Devils. John Bilney motioning to the spot where he wants somebody to go. Morley pass it over Sutter as King one on one and tried to get it to Williams. Good save by Morrison. He knocked it out of bounds, but saved the sure basket had Williams got the ball. One dribble too much. 47-36. Blue Devils lead 2:03 to play in the first half. And still, Maryland's not in the one in one. Reggie Jackson getting an inbounds to Dutch Morley to King. Jackson back into the corner. He threw that one a little too high, and Sutter hit it, but so did Williams, and Williams was the last man to touch it. The Blue Devils and Steve Gray will take it out of bounds. Gray gets it right back, brings it front court. Now wants to see things set up. 47 36, Blue Devil lead. 150 to play in the first half. Jim Spinarco standing up with Coach Foster down by the bench, motioning to him, telling him the formation to use, the setup to use. We will, well, yep, we have a jump ball. Jim Hernjack called the jump ball from under the baseline. Duke's it will belong, nevertheless, to Duke. Watch it as they make the move. Ball goes deep on the inside. Now the scramble's after the ball. You see Morley dive for that ball, but of course it's Duke's ball because Merlin had it out about flat. First jump ball situation we've had, but it's Duke's turn. So Gray has it with Harold now outside. Morley guarding Harold. Sutter behind the screen set by Morrison. Filney had the rebound and he's fouled as he goes up. That was evidently on Scott Getch. It was. And here comes the zone trap again or a zone press. It's the 2-2-1. Two, 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 They're backing off a little bit. They're not going to trap. 47-36 Blue Devils lead. 1.20 to play before halftime. King over Morrison. Getch with the rebound. Harold to help him out. Sada didn't have anybody under the basket, but he looked there. Morrison from the corner. Partially blocked by Williams, and he commits the foul, and that is his second. Watch Morrison now as he starts to make his jump. Williams goes after the ball, but he gets a piece of the arm. He didn't agree with it, but it looked like he did. He certainly did. Bender, Denard, Bernardo, Jaminski back into the Blue Devil lineup. Harold Morrison is going to stay in as Banks gets a little further rest. Charlie, I think the reason for this is to steady things down. With a minute and six seconds to go, you wouldn't figure that uh, Foster would put these boys back in, but it's been cut from 15 to 11, and he doesn't like it. Morrison's at the free throw line. That's why he stays in. He has another opportunity. His first point of the day, which is a little better than his season average. He averages seven-tenths of a point a game, Bones. Does not play very much. 
That was my average. 49 36. Blue Devil lead back up to 13 with 105 to play. Going back in the zone now and make him work for a shot. Bilney looking for the right play. Jackson being outside. Morley. I called him Bilney, but that's Dutch Morley. Bilney is in the corner on the right side. There he is. Jackson. They look like they want to get the ball to Williams down in 30 deep. 30 seconds left to play. That's what they want to do. Get it into Williams deep. They've got Williams under the basket. Morrison covering him in front. Jaminski's in there too. They got it to Williams. And he missed the shot. Jaminski got it. Morley made a good interception on the long pass intended for Spinarco. King from the corner. Uh, two points one way is good as two another. Eight points for Albert King. 49, 38. Blue Devils lead by 11. Five seconds left to play. Tender to Spinarco, who will have to take the shot. Took it off balance. Yep, it counts. 17 points for Jim Spinarco. That's the end of the first half of play with a score. Duke 51, Carroll at 38. We'll be back in a moment with our halftime show. At halftime, it's 51-38. The Blue Devils lead Maryland uh, by 13, and we talked about the fact that the Blue Devils would try for the long pass bones. Let's take a look at one of them. Long passes are book of the good part. That's Getch passing a long pass to Spinarco, and you see how easy he goes in the for it. Now, the thing about this is that this has happened about seven times, Charlie. It surely has. Uh, Gene Banks did it a little bit earlier also. We can take a look at that one likewise. Here's a long pass. It's Banks is going to throw. Now watch this. This pass looks like it's going to Spinarco, but here comes the tight end, Denard, from the left-hand side. D Spinarco got out of his way, and what a beautiful shot he made out of it. Never broke stride. They're 86 foot. So we pause now for station identification. This is the Atlantic Coast Conference Television Network. Coggins overstocked and selling 79s at $100 over factory invoice price. Save on Dodge, Pontiac, Honda, Volvo, and Mazda at Coggins. Let's take a look at the last play of the first half, which helped uh, up the Duke lead to 51-38 bone. Well, you, you see the pass that was thrown to Spinarkle, and it looked as though he might not have much time. Up in the air, he goes with a little double bump and puts that ball up, and it goes in, and that makes it 51-38. to Yep, and the light came on almost as the ball went through, but the basket was good because it was in the air when the, before the light came on, before the buzzer went off, and 13-point lead for the Blue Devils, and four times this season, Maryland has trailed at halftime. They've lost three of those ball games. came back to win one when they trailed by a couple down at Clemson in a contest that you saw, a number of you saw here on this network. Uh, 17 points by Jim Spinarco points up a great performance by him in the first half, and I would have to say, we said there was going to be a battle underneath among the big men. I would have to say Duke's winning that battle. They're winning that battle, and they're winning the battle of turnovers. I think, unofficially, Charlie, it's something like 10 to 3 now that Maryland's turned it over 10 times, and Duke has turned it over three times. But the thing that we talked about at the top of the, of the game is the long pass. And the other thing was that Maryland wanted to run, but they couldn't afford to run into situations like they have. They, they put Duke ahead. They were close. It was 28-28, 29-28. Then all of a sudden, Duke spurts out to about 11-point lead simply because Maryland was trying to play catch-up basketball, and that's not good basketball. Both these teams are in the top 20 as we take a look at the national standings. Ranked number one still is Notre Dame with Indiana State, the only major unbeaten team in second spot, and Duke the number three team. With the University of North Carolina Bones, that'll change a little bit as a result of the Tar Heels' losses in their last two games. Yeah, would you believe it? I think the headlines of one paper said today, Furman beats North Carolina Dash again. I couldn't believe it. Did it last year in the same situation in the North-South Tournament in Charlotte. Then we have UCLA and Louisville rounding out the top six clubs with the... Um, Michigan State moving will will probably move up as they beat Ohio State, which was ranked number seventh earlier this week. And Maryland in 17th spot. Well, they lost to Virginia at home, and they have to win this one to hope to stay in the top 20. I would think. I think the only kind of people that are concerned a little bit about it is that Indiana State's in second place with almost double the votes that Notre Dame had. But I think Notre Dame deserves that spot. Well, it's difficult to choose the number one team, and I put very little faith in the national rankings. Uh, you can make them just about any way you want to. So let's uh, take a
take a little time in a moment. We'll return with more halftime activities after this important message. Now stay tuned for a fast break, an inside look at ACC basketball. Wheat's First Securities brings you Fast Break with Billy Packer. There are no more important duties on the college basketball coaching staff than scouting and recruiting. Assistant coaches in the ACC spend hundreds of hours judging talent, meeting high school players, and helping to make scholarship decisions. The long airport hours and weekends away from families add to the burden. And the competition for the top prep talent is brutal. Fast Break will be back to talk with three ACC assistant coaches about talent hunting, after this word from Wheat First Securities. Joe, you spend a lot of time with those reels up there, don't you? Billy, I couldn't guess how many hours we watch films. And when you are responsible from a scouting standpoint as an assistant coach, do you have the responsibility for all the teams in the conference? No, a couple years ago I, I scouted every single team that we played, but this year I have two conference teams and the other two coaches have two each, so it's split evenly that way between scouting and watching film and watching your own film and practice plans and uh, right after this interview I'm on my way to the airport uh, you know it's just an incredible amount of time uh, people really don't know what it's all about unless you've been in it and I'm sure you'd know since you have been in it uh, you've got to love your work and you've got to believe in your work or you're going to find yourself working 60 hour weeks and not liking it you won't be doing it very long I think it's really appropriate to find an assistant coach in the lobby of an airport. Monty, you people spend an awful lot of time going from place to place. Yeah, we sure do. You know, this is uh, my first year on the job, Billy, as, as an assistant coach at North Carolina State. And it's amazing uh, how many different airports you find uh, across the country that you never knew existed before. And uh, we do spend a lot of time here. You eat a lot of hot dogs, you drink a lot of Cokes, and uh, just spend a lot of time uh, waiting on planes. Eddie, one of the responsibilities for any assistant coach is to get on the road and look for ball players. It's kind of a 12-month occupation now, isn't it? Uh, no question about it, Billy. Uh, with the summer camps where some of the top players play in the summertime, there's six or seven between those camps, our own camp, uh, film study, highlight film, speaking engagements, it's just about 365 days a year. Joe, look into your career now as a, as a scout and a recruiter and pick out for me one player that you saw play early in his development and, and had some plans for him as a college player and turned out to be a little different than you expected. See, there are quite a few. Let me think. Uh, Mike Gaminski for Duke. Well, he turned out to be a great one. That I one know. should have been easy. I watched him play. Uh, well, I met him when he was an eighth grader. Uh, alumni in that area, I was up there staying with him overnight, and uh, he asked me to go by and meet this kid. And I did, and he said, I don't know if he'll ever be a player now, but at least you, he's tall, and you ought to just meet him. So I met him, and about two years, two or three years later, Mike called us, his coach called us, said he wanted to come to our basketball camp. And he uh, came to our camp, and while he was in camp, Terry Chili was one of our counselors. He played at Duke, and he went back to the Duke coach and said, hey, there's a heck of a player at Maryland's camp that you should start recruiting. And as he turned out, Mike came out a year early and uh, turned out to be... Much better than anybody anticipated, I think. Money, as an assistant coach, do you have a specific territory at North Carolina State that you're involved in recruiting? Well, j just about anywhere where I can be effective, Billy. I, I grew up in Indiana. Uh, I come from the Midwest. I, I know a lot of people back there from my high school experience. So the Indiana, Illinois, Ohio area, uh, I work, uh, concentrate a lot in that area. Of course, I played basketball at North Carolina State, so I, I have a lot of contacts also in the Virginia, uh, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina areas. When you go out to look for a specific player, are you looking for a guy to fit a need that you have, or are you looking for the best kind of ball player that you can find regardless of his ability? Well, we're looking for a specific need. Uh, we never want to over-recruit for one position. There are just good players every year, and uh, if you're going to have uh, five great centers, well, that fifth center is certainly not going to play a lot, and if you only have one guard at the same time, well, you'll be hurting in the backcourt. So. Uh, we recruit for a specific need and for a specific position that we think we need help at at that certain year. Here at Duke University's Cameron Indoor Stadium, the halftime score is the Blue Devils 51, the Maryland Terrapins 38. The teams have returned to the court, so we'll be back in a moment for the start of the second half after this message. The second half of today's telecast is brought to you by the Pilot Life Insurance Company and your local pilot representative. In life, health, and group insurance, Pilot helps you through life. 
And by Hardy's, Hardy's best eaten in town, up and down and all around. By Pabst Brew Ribbon. Pabst is brewed to be the best naturally with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. By Toyota, you ask for it, you got it, Toyota. By Piedmont Airlines, now serving over 90 cities in 16 states. Piedmont, making new places part of our world and yours. And by Holly Farms Chicken, nothing but the best for you. Fifty-one thirty-eight lead for the Duke Blue Devils as we are preparing to start the second half of the contest. We find that at halftime, the Blue Devils are hitting better than 60%, 60.6 on 20 of 33 from the floor, 11 of 15 from the line, which is only 73%. But those 11 free throws that they've made are nine more than Maryland has attempted or made. Maryland's two for two from the line, only two free throw attempts. In the first half, Maryland shot 54.5% and that 100% from the free throw line. Uh, Maryland had 10 turnovers in the first half. The Blue Devils had seven turnovers. The Blue Devils won the battle of the boards. They out-rebounded the Terrapins 18 to 13. And have, uh, again, we can't em uh, emphasize too much the importance of the long passes, which enabled Duke to get several quick and easy baskets, Bones. But, Charlie, I think that's been the difference in the first half, that they've been able to get those real easy baskets. Now, I say easy. Of course, you saw some of them played <laughs> to you and you can tell that they were difficult shots but the long pass has been killing Maryland it has killed some other teams this year and what Maryland has to do is to be patient to try to make up this 13 point deficiency they must be patient I don't mean give up the running game but when they get down there and they don't have it they need to work for that real easy shot if Duke's going to blow them out of here they're going to try to that long pass and when they don't have the fast break they're going to be patient with patterns Holly Farms awards a $1,000 scholarship in the name of the outstanding player of the game as chosen and by the game announcers to that player's school. And we're thinking about that as the second half gets underway with Maryland having possession. Duke putting on pressure in the backcourt. King nevertheless brings it front court. King and Jackson. Graham, Gibson, and Williams for Maryland. Their starting lineup. The Blue Devils start with Spinarkel and Bender in the backcourt. Kaminsky in center. Bernard and Banks in the front court. Bernard just stolen away. There's a long pass off the fingertips of Spinarkel. Maryland gets it right back again. 1938 to play as we start the second half, 51-38 Duke lead. Benji Jackson to bring it down court. Jackson with pressure, nevertheless gets it front court, has a lot of pressure now from Bernard, and it's forced to jump ball. Let's see if the home will be long. Of course, forcing it in, Duke's ball's out, out of bounds because Maryland had the last one. Yep, sure is. Trap is what they were trying to do, a trap they did. Bender will make the inbounds play. Well, he won't because it's going to the other side of the floor. Denard going to make the inbound play. This is play number three. <laughs> Whatever that means. Williams knocked it away. Saved it from getting into the clutches of Banks, who had a basket, had it gotten to him. Graham outside against Spinarco. Denard tried for the steal. Didn't succeed in the steal, but knocked it away. Easy two points for Kenny Denard, who now has 11 for the ball game. He averages seven points a game. He's having an exceptional day. 53 to 38. Duke leads it up to 15 after one minute of play in the second half. They're in man for man. Of course, they're playing defense with the nose pointed toward that offensive basket. Jackson's it? loose behind Williams' screen. Jackson puts it in. Four points for Reggie Jackson. 53 40. Blue Devils' lead is 13. Denard outside. Bender against Jackson. Spinarco. Jemiski working against Gibson, finally gets it up and in. I think he made a move that Gibson didn't expect that time because he made his move first to his right, to our left, and then that's the move he usually makes and then came back the other way. 15-point lead, Blue Devils 55, Maryland 40, 18-30 to play second half. Jackson against Bender. King against the Denard. Real tight man for me. Ernest Graham took the shot, wouldn't go for it. Graham had four points in the first half. He's also got three personal fouls, as has Larry Gibson. Nobody on the Blue Devil team with more than one personal. Denard, uh, rather Spinoza, driving the baseline, dishing off to Jaminski, and he now has 13 points. That was a beautiful move. He was up in the air and had absolutely no place to go with it. He had to find a free man and did. 57-40. Blue Devils lead is 17. Interception by Spinarco. Passed it right back into the hands of King. Jackson moving. 
Jeminski partially blocked the shot. Williams had the rebound and put it up, finally in the possession of Denard. Denard tripped up as he gets it to Bender for the basket. That was a beautiful three-on-one situation, and you were right, Denard won it. Threw it the length of the court to King. King gets it right away. He's got 10 points now. It's 59-42. 17-point Blue Devil lead as Maryland retaliates with a quick basket. Spinarco. Bender against Jackson. Banks. Tipped away by Gibson. And out of bounds by Gibson. This is real rough going under that basket. Sutherland and Morrison get Carroll and Gray into the Blue Devil lineup, replacing the starting team. The Duke Blue team comes in with 17.05 to play in the game. That's when you get tired, Charlie. In the very first part of the second half, you can you get your second win, you're really hurt. 59-42. Blue Devil lead is 17 as they send what they call the Blue team into the ball game. Morrison. Getch outside. That's Sutter. Sutter, by the way, is the only southpaw on this Duke team. Good shooter. Harrell outside. They're gifted at changing direction, I'll tell you that. What are they trying to do now with this team and this offense? Well, well they, they got it to Morrison close. That's what they did. And he did not make the shot, but he's fouled. And it's on Buck Williams who complains, but that is his third personal. First personal of this half. Here it is. You watch as the ball goes into Morrison. Now watch and see if he hooks him with his arm as he goes. He did do so. He hooked him when he first started around. There's any doubt in my mind. You didn't get a chance to tell me what they're trying to do, but I'll let you tell me in a moment as we get play underway again. And Morrison goes up and possession now in the hands of Manning of the Terrapin. Williams underneath and Gibson was clobbered as he got the ball by Jim Sutter. Watch this move. You see Buck Williams go up, pass it to Gibson. Sutter could not stop. He didn't intend to do that. Uh, Sutter just lost his balance, couldn't stop. That's the first personal against Sutter. First personal of this half, first team foul of this half against the Blue Devils. 59-42, the Blue Devils lead by 17. Blue Devil defense, Bones back in the zone. Right. Got it underneath to Williams. Well, Eight they, points for Buck Williams. They like to go to him as they tried to very much in the end of the first half. 59 44. Harrell, the point guard of this group outside. Sutter tried to pass it to Harrell, breaking. Williams got it. The pass led Harrell a little too much, and a foul is going to be called in the backcourt on Steve Gray. That's his first, second team foul of this half against the Blue Devils, and it is 59 44. The Blue Devils lead. There's a timeout on the court with the score Duke 59, Maryland 44. Now, here's a word from the company that helps you through life. Doesn't anybody make a sporty car that looks like a million? But doesn't cost like a million. Toyota, what have you got? The Toyota Celica GT Sport Coupe. Your money's worth and more in a beautiful package. You got a roomy four-passenger cockpit, five speeds, full instrumentation. You got the Toyota Celica GT Sport Coupe. A beautiful value. Toyota, you got it. You asked for it. You got it, Toyota. They're back and better than ever. Boss Steakhouse, brown and served rolls. Look at that. Twelve man-sized rolls you can bake as golden brown and crunchy as you like and serve at any meal. Ounce for ounce, they're your best brown and served by. Boss Steakhouse, brown and served rolls. They're at your grocer's in this western-style, colorful package. Brown them up, butter them up, delicious. Mmm. Earlier this afternoon, Virginia defeated Wake Forest 83-74. Tonight, the Carolina will meet Virginia Tech, and the state will play Furman, while Clemson plays South Carolina this evening to complete the day's ACC action. Duke and Maryland here at Cameron Indoor Stadium at Duke University. 59-44 lead for the Blue Devils. Maryland with the basketball. And Duke in the zone. You got to penetrate that zone. That's the best way in the world to beat it. Hit the middle man or penetrate it. They've got Williams on the low post. Tried to hit him. He turned around. Didn't see the ball coming. 
59 44 blue devils with a chance to add to the lead spinorkel outside banks from outside Jaminski's tip up wouldn't go and Gray of Gibson got the rebound he had such an easy one he missed it Jaminski King Bernard again you see how the Blue Devils look for that long pass every time Bones every single time they'll look for it's the easiest play in basketball that's Monaco he's got 19 points 61 44 Blue Devils 61 46 you gotta know how to pull them down right <laughs> Jack through the middle Jackson from outside 15-point lead for Duke, 14-45 to play. Bernard was breaking toward the basket, and Bender thought he was going to go the other way, and that's why the ball went out of bounds behind Bernard. That's going to happen, Charlie, when you change direction as often as Duke does without any signal whatsoever. Manning to Jackson. Another zone by Duke. Manning from outside. Nine points for Greg Manning. 61-48, 13-point Blue Devil lead. Bill Foster wants to call a timeout for his team. He evidently didn't like the way that they were penetrating the zone. So there's a timeout on the court with a score. Duke 61, Maryland 48. Blue Devil Vince, Jim Spinarco, number 34, with his back to you, has 19 points, leading scorer in the ball game, And his high game this season has been 30 points against Ohio State in the loss in overtime to the Buckeyes. He had a 33-point game earlier in his career, his all-time high. 61-48, Blue Devils, 13-point lead, 14-24 to play. Well, I tell you, Spinarco is a tremendous basketball player. The only thing that concerns me, really, is his speed. He's only as fast as he has to be for him. There's Jaminski from just in front of the free throw line, and from there, two points. You know, he's missed some easy ones today, ones that he doesn't usually miss, but that wasn't easy. 15-point Blue Devil lead, 63-48. King looking underneath the Williams, but didn't get it going. Jackson, King. They're just staying back in that 2 3. And Maryland is unable to penetrate. Manning was loose for the shot over Denard. Banks has the rebound. Banks averaging almost nine rebounds a ball game. 63 48, two doubles with a 15 point lead. Turn it over. Reggie Jackson in a hurry down court. Williams. Underneath Manning, he had to battle his way up, but he got his two points. How beautiful move. 11 points now for Greg Manning. 63-50, the Blue Devils lead is 13. So 13, 20 to play. Banks in the corner. Oh, Gibson manhandling Jaminski, if you can imagine that. Jaminski lost it out of bounds and went out of bounds. Out of all King as he pursued it. a beautiful shot the ball Williams passes a beautiful pass under to Manning and Manning goes up with trees all around him and makes the basket Greg is only 6-1 he was in the midst of some height that time Banks outside Vince Taylor back in the lineup for the Blue Devils loses the ball to Manning Reggie Jackson into the front court Graham now, Graham can cut hot bones and break the game up a little bit or bring it closer. He's got six points for the day, and he averages 19. 63-52, you move by 11. Today's the first day I've seen him hit two in a row and not hit five in a row. Vince Taylor tossing it over Manning, and a foul occurs as Banks starts to go for the ball. It's on Mark Williams. That is his fourth. They can't afford to lose Williams. Second team foul of this half uh, against uh, Terrapins. Buck Williams will come out of the ball game. John Bilney is going in to replace him. Here's Bilney, number 50, 6'8", 215 pounder, a junior from Woodcliffe, New Jersey. When they lose Williams, they lose an advantage under the basket that they need. As Williams is the leading rebounder in the conference. Strength, quickness, ability to jump. From Arkansas to the north, to lay it in either. They can thread a needle. That's the thing that they do so well. 65-52, Blue Devils, 12 and a half minutes to play. They get back and set up in that zone very quickly, too, Bones. There's Graham taking the shot again. The beautiful part about Duke is that's a beautiful rebound by Jaminski, but the Jaminski good thing they do, they get back just as they get on offense. Jaminski took the rebound away from Banks and over the ball. Marco gets a couple more. 21 points now for Jim Spinarco. 67 52. Blue Devils up to 15 again with 12 minutes left in the ball game. 2 3 zone. They've used it most of this half. Defense, defense, defense. Jackson. 
You've got to have people flashing that pivot, backing out, flashing, driving. Manning thought he had a shot. He's fouled as he tried to go by. You get two men out there, split those two men, make them come together, and then you can pass to the man they have to move off of. The foul's on Vince Taylor. That is his first. That's the third team foul of this half against the Blue Devils. Jackson for Manning. Now around the horn without a fake. That's tw once, twice they've done it. That's a little fake. Now in the middle. Now he can give to someone. The crowd ball that gives a walk. He's got the ball back again. DeVar collars it. DeVard to Taylor. DeVard put it up again and it wouldn't go for him. Gibson finally recovered, and here's Manning in a hurry. Ooh, layup missed the cook. Or the layup, whichever he was attempting to do. You're going to see a beautiful pass here. Manning's going to pass that ball off on the blind side to Graham as he goes in. And you see Spinarkle had no idea where he was. He just took too much. Here comes Banks through the air like Superman. Uh, through the air like Superman fouling it. At the free throw line, Ernest Graham has a two-shot opportunity. Graham has six points. This is his first trip to the line today. I say he had two points. He has six points for the day. 67-53. Blue Devils by 14. 11.07 to play. Blue Devils by 13. Spinarco. Lost the throw. Good out of bounds. Well, you'll have to say that they can pinpoint that pass because that was almost perfect, and Graham was right on top of him. There was a chance that there was a little foot collision down there. On which side, I don't know. 67-54, Blue Devils lead by 13. Manning from the side. Gibson in for the rebound. Bilney has the rebound. Harrell got hold of it. Harrell bounced it off of Graham. Finally, Manning's got control. Out of all that, a couple of points. He could have done it to start with, we'd have saved that time. <laughs> 13 points for Greg Manning. 67 56, 11 point lead for the Blue Devils. Harold's just Spinarco breaking. It just seems like that all they have to do is to get it to Spinarco and there she blows. 69 56, Duke, with 10 15 to play. Oh, I would say that Merrill is being fairly. Deliberate against the zone offense. We're going to have a foul called here. Yes, I'd say they're being deliberate against it, and they're getting good shots against it. Fouls on Harold. Let's look at All this. All right, let's watch this. The first thing that happens, it's hard to tell from him what the situation was, but Graham's after it, and you can see that Manning finally came up with it. It's hard to follow when they're on the floor like that. Build it. Outside away from the basket to Gray to Gibson. Jackson the building back to Jackson. Manning driving. He's playing a basketball game, a real good basketball. He's got 15 points. 69, 58, 11 point lead for the Blue Devils. 9.45 to play. Javinsky working against Gibson. That's it. 17 points for Mike Kaminsky. 71-58. Blue Devils lead back to 13. Again, I'll say they'll be, they'll be fairly patient against the, uh, the zone bones. They patient. know they have plenty of time, and they're trying to work it inside or get the loose shot outside. Very, very few fake in the flash into the pivot. You just can't stand in there because they're going to set up the defense to stop you. You see how Harold's moving in front of uh, Gibson. And there's a penetration. There's Graham shot. Building with a good rebound. There's no assignments on blocking out here, and that's the reason they got it back. Now goes Manning again. Kaminsky blocks that one. Bilney gets it and puts it back in. But you see, they penetrated. That's where they got it, even though it was blocked partially. First point for Bilney, 71-60. Blue Doubles lead is 11. Harold to Jaminski. Taylor laid it in, but there had been a foul call before that. Jaminski for coming over the top. What you'll do sometimes when you miss an easy one, and honest to goodness, he has missed some easy ones today. Easy for him. Second personal on Jaminski. Jaminski has never fouled out of a game in high school or college. He averages two personals per ball game. He's got two now. He's still got 8.45 to play. 71-60. Blue Devils lead. 
Now watch how many times they flash that pivot or drive on the zone or fake a pass. That, by the way, was the sixth team foul against Duke. Gibson moving against Jaminski. All right. Jaminski's going to back off of him now because he doesn't like to foul and they can't afford for him to foul out. 71 62. Duke lead nine. Banks moving on building. Now, now Banks can go around building. There any question? That's a mismatch to start with. Foul is on Larry Gibson. He'll watch this move. Bill is trying to stay up with him, but he can't do it. It's impossible for him to stay up. Foul call away from the ball. Gibson was pushing Jaminski, and uh, that is the fourth personal on Larry Gibson, whom they desperately need in the lineup. There's a timeout on the court with the score, Duke 71, Carolyn 62. 120 seconds of playing time left here at Cameron Indoor Stadium with the Blue Devils leading the Terrapins 71-62. It was a 13-point Duke lead at halftime. Charlie, this uh, is something uh, that Duke has been guilty of all year. They were up at se or 17 points at one time, but now they're up by only nine. So it remains to be seen if they can hold on, you know, against Ohio State. They were ahead against, uh, I believe it was St. John, 17 in one game, 19 in another. Last foul was called away from the ball on Larry Gibson. That was his fourth. Buck Williams also charged with four personals. As Duke takes it out of bounds under their own basket, Duke's starting lineup back in the ball game. Enders, Bernardo, Denard, Jaminski, and Banks. They're going to try to get a real easy one or pull Maryland out of that zone. Now they're going out. I think Manny's saying, go over and take Spinarco. That's your man, and I've got Bender. They're in man for man now. Banks started by building, passing over Graham. Interception by Manning. Jackson just banks it in. They're playing real good basketball now. Seven point Maryland lead. Uh, Maryland trails by 71 64. Duke. 740 to play. Maryland's back in the zone again. They're going to make Duke pull them out if they want them out. They'll flash that pivot and, and uh, Denard will run that baseline and try to slide behind the man. They'll try to get it in the middle to Jaminski. Denarco. Nope, he walked with it. He fooled the man, but he didn't fool the referee. He walked with it as he started his move, and the turnover gives the ball to the Terrapins with an opportunity to cut into the lead a little more. They trail now 71, 64, 7, 23 left to play in the ball game. It makes the basket just a little bit smaller the closer a team gets to you. Jackson against Spinarco. And Duke in a man-to-man. -man. Jackson lost it inside. Finally gets it away. Gibson's got it. And it's taken away from him by Bender. You have to watch those little fellows. They'll sneak up and pick your pockets, and that's what Bender did to Gibson. Spinarco. 25 points now for Jim Spinarco. 73-64. Duke lead back up to nine with 6.50 to play. Gerard knocked it away. Banks picked it up. Now, a little contact between Bilney and Denard, and of course the crowd thought a foul should be called, but this is a Duke crowd at Cameron Indoor Stadium. I imagine one was pushed Take a look at that the play. Let's watch it. Here's the pass. You see what's happened there. There's contact, but there's pushing on both sides, so it's even Steven as far as I'm concerned. Greg Manning will take it out of bounds for the Terrapins as soon as the floor is completely wiped up under the Maryland basket. Manning from Dutch Morley back in the ball game. He has replaced Reggie Jackson. Looking for somebody that can put assists on him. Bilney has it knocked away by Denard. Denard saved it from going out of bounds, and Bender's got it. Good interception by Bilney. He's got Morley, and he's got Graham, and Graham's got Spinarkel and a bucket. It's getting to be scout about a little bit, and the favor's turning to Maryland. Ten points now for Graham. 73 66. Blue Devils lead by seven. Six minutes, five seconds of playing time left. And Maryland back in his own. Well, we'll see if Duke wants to play against it. They're Mark perfect. gets it uh, to Banks to Jaminski, and Jaminski had to tap him one time, but it goes. That was a set play. He knew exactly where Jaminski was going to be. Once he got in the baseline, Jaminski's coming down the lane. Nine point lead for the Blue Devils, 75 66. 19 points. Jaminski Manning gets it to Gibson. Gibson gets it to the bucket. 15 points, Larry Gibson. 75 68. Seven point lead for Duke. Banks going to wait for a little help. They're trying to play a zone. Benders all along. Bilney has the rebound. He's played a fine ball game. He's been in there a long time, and he's played well, Bilney has. Bilney replaced Buck Williams, who charged with four personals. 
Graham saying, let's get a little motion in here as he whirls his finger above his head. Once you hit that pivot, man, you should see somebody making a move somewhere. Bilney says he'll make the move himself. Foul as he put it up left hand. Oh, he walked with the ball. Here comes Buck Williams back. Bilney walked with the ball as he made his move. This coach Bill Foster directing his team. 75-68, blue double lead by seven. We have 5 0 5 to play, but Norco will make the inbound play. There's Bill Mark the coach left to Brazil. They're back in a zone now, and it looks like they're trying to play a 1-3-1, but of course it isn't anything but a matchup. And Bilney has been replaced by Buck Williams playing with four personals. And remember that Larry Gibson also has four personals. Against now, very shortly, the Terrapins will be told to come out after the ball. They'll go get it. They'll go get it early. Wally going after Bender. Wally and Bender collided pretty hard as Bender passed the ball off. Taylor driving to Jaminski. His tap wouldn't go. That's what I mean by easy shots today. They're not, they're not real easy, but they usually off of him. The Narcos are Jaminski underneath. And a foul called underneath. When a great team can play like that. That is on Buck Williams. That's fine. You can watch this as Denarco, as he gets that ball and he goes up in the air, Jaminski's right there waiting for him, and of course Denarco can see the basket and he can see Jaminski, and Jaminski gets two points and gets fouled. He called it on Buck Williams, and that is five on Buck Williams, but he is still in the ball game. Has gone to the lane, and uh, Jim Herjack is telling him now that he's out of the ball game. Well, if you'll take just as long as you can to get out, it gives somebody else a chance to rest a little bit. What to say? That was on me. He didn't think the foul was on him, Bucky. You he was playing with uh, four fouls. It could have. It, it could have been on uh, anybody. It, it so happened that the officials saw it on Buck Williams first, and of course he's out. He's not far from home here. Rock him out, North Carolina. He leaves with eight points. Charles Buck Williams, highly recruited, and I would assume that. Uh, no, we do not have Bill back in the ball game at this time. Albert King comes in. King and Gibson, Morley, Manning, and Graham in the lineup for the turn. They tried to put a press on, but Maryland can break that. They're well trained at it. 22 points now for Mike Jaminski. 13 just half. Graham shot. 78-70. Dutch Morley's a real hustler. Almost stole that ball. Duke leads by eight. Vince Taylor kicked it out of bounds, and it'll go over to the Terrapins. They trail by eight with 359 left to play. Vince Taylor, just a freshman. You can expect things like that occasion, man. He's played great basketball. Dutch Morley outside against the Duke zone. King tipped as it got away from him, and he's going to have a foul call. So Taylor gets it back. a timeout on the court with the score Duke 78 Maryland 70. There's nothing more exciting than the ACC tournament and you can be there if you win the Holly Farms ACC tournament sweepstakes. The grand prize winner receives four ACC tournament tickets, all transportation, lodging at Holiday Inn Four Seasons, meals at fine restaurants, and personal limousine service. Entry forms and details available at fine stores where you see this Holly Farms display. Deadline for entries, February 10th. Enter now. Well, we won tonight. It was quite a fight. Now it's all behind. Got blue ribbon on my mind. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. There are a lot of beers, but there's only one, Pabst. It's brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. Duke holds a 78-70 lead with 3.48 to play in this contest. Eight points up are the Blue Devils. They led by halftime by 13, 51 to 38 at halftime. This is a time, Charlie, that Duke needs to look for the real good shot and make Maryland make the mistakes. And of course, when Maryland does get that ball, they need to get back on defense. Maryland's got to put some pressure in the backcourt, too, they as they sure are. toss it inbound. Maryland wants to take good shots. There's a lot of time. There's over three and a half minutes to play. The last foul, by the way, was against Greg Manning. It was only his first. They're playing man for man, but this is switching man for man. 
But he's just about half to play man to man in this situation. Trailing by eight with now 3.30 left to play, and that turns it over, and the Terrapins will get it. Bender lost his footing is what happened. He was on his way back. Dutch Morley looking at Coach Lefty Drizel as he brings it into the front court. Take it and flash the pivot, drive the 20th. That's the huge the whole thing. Graham wanted to take that shot over from Arco and change his mind. King is going to take it from the free throw line. That's just like shooting a free throw, and King does that well, too. And he has got 12 points for the day. 78-72, six-point lead for the Blue Devils. There's a timeout on the court with a score. Duke, 78, Maryland, 72. You know what I think about life insurance? Well, I always felt the time you need it the most is when you can afford it the least. But then I talked to this pilot life agent who really understood about the high cost of raising kids. Got me all the protection they need now. At the price I can afford now. Jason, you've got it made. With a little help from the pilot, of course. by Nike. Let us remind you again about the ACC Women's Tournament next weekend in Raleigh. It'll be held Monday through Saturday at Reynolds Coliseum on the North Carolina State campus. You saw the Maryland Terrapins break off their bench. They trailed by six points. They've done a good job in cutting down a 13-point halftime lead to six points with 3-11 left in the game, and they will have the basketball when play resumes. You know, Charlie, they have been as many as 17 down in this half, and then, as you said, brought it back to six. Well, I misinformed you in saying they would have the basketball. The Blue Devils will have the basketball. Kenny Denard's going to take it out of bounds under the Maryland basket. King is over to guard him. He gets it inbounds to Bender, and King immediately picks up him along with Manny. Monarco to Banks as they beat the press. Banks' foot slipped as he made the pass, so he got rid of the ball just in time. Monarco against Manny. Monarca lost control of the ball, regained it again, and traveling is called. Well, he, he got a little piece of it, sort of halfway palmed it, semi-dribbled it. A semi-dribble, that's a huge ball. The 78-72, 2.50 to play. Blue Devils lead the Terrapin. It means half one hand, half another. Graham, Blue Devils in their zone. Morley outside. Manning. Morley tried to get it underneath the Gibson, looked to his left and threw it down the middle, and it was knocked away. He didn't fool anybody. 78-72, Duke leads, 2.25 to play. Bender against Morley front court. Spinarkel against Manning. Gaminski back out to Spinarkel. That's patience. They're running the clock at 2.14 with a six-point lead. Spinarkel. Bender. To Spinarco breaker. Give and go. He's not used to the alley oop, so he didn't duck it. He just put it up. 27 points for Jim Spinarco. 80 to 72. Blue Devils lead. 153 to play. No, Jaminski didn't touch it. Give him an assist. Graham. Jaminski finally corralled the ball. And he's got Bender all alone. But it didn't stay that way. The Banks follow. That's what you call following up. You never know when that'll be necessary. 10-point lead for the Blue Devils with 1.30 to play, 82-72. Now Maryland has to hurry a little bit. So Manning hurry. Gibson gets it out to Graham. And Graham bounced it off his own foot. He's claiming that he was interfered with by Spinarco as he started to move for the basket. And that's what made him bounce it off his foot. 117 to play. 10-point Duke lead, 82-72. Coach Lefty Drizel trying to rally his team. Taylor in a hurry against Manning. And I mean a hurry, and I mean a beautiful play. Eight points for Vince Taylor. 84-72. Now we have one minute left to play. Graham trying to get it back, knocked away by Bender underneath, but he or Banks committed the foul. It must have been Banks. Yeah, he's the one disgusted. To see the anguished expression on his face, that's his third personal. We are in the bonus situation, so somebody will go to the line. King is, I believe, near. 
Evidently, it'll be Albert King. This is his first trip to the free throw line today. He's got 12 points from the field. He deserves to go to the line. He's the man that took the bruising. <laughs> Albert King is also a 75% free throw shooter. They'll call, another opportunity. They'll call timeout if he makes this, I would imagine, even though they their chances are very slim now. 84-73. Blue Devils lead is 11. Back to 10. No, they didn't call timeout. 57 seconds left to play. Thanks to Denard, who's going to move for the basket. Gibson got enough of it to deflect it. Well, he didn't deflect it. It just went off the rim, evidently, because had Gibson touched it, it would belong to the Blue Devils. It belongs to the Terrapins with 49 seconds left to play, and they are 10 points down. Had they been closer, he would never have tried that. Graham. Javinsky with a rebound. 40 seconds left to play. 10-point lead for Duke. Denard to Jaminski, dished it off the banks, and he missed the dunk because he was fouled and he went up. Real nice pass by a big man. Most of the time you should put it on the floor there. He didn't. Got by with it. That's on Larry Gibson. If it is, that's all for him. Here it is. Watch the move go down. Watch Jaminski as he just dishes the ball off the banks. Banks goes up in the air. You see Gibson go toward him. And Gibson, of course, about 6'11". Made it impossible for him to shoot, but he did foul him. Gibson leaves the ball game with four or five personals and 15 points. And replacing him is Taylor Baldwin, 6'10", 230-pound freshman. That's number 54, almost in the center of the screen. He's from Greenwich, Connecticut, averages one point and one rebound to ball game. 33 seconds of playing time left as Banks moves up. That's Banks' third straight free throw. He has five points for the game. Charlie, when we get ready, let's turn our cards over at the same time and see if we pick the same man for the Harley Farmer Award. All right, I think it's a good idea for us to vote in the center like that. That's four straight free throws for Banks, who now has six points. 86-74, Blue Devils, 30 seconds left to play. Graham almost lost his balance, but got his bucket. 14 points for Ernest Graham, 86-76. Blue Devils with a 10-point lead. There's a timeout on the court for the score. Duke, 86, Maryland, 76. Why does Piedmont Airlines have so many different kinds of discount fares? To save you money. We have a lot of fares because so many of you fly to different places at different times for different lengths of stay. If you want to save money the next time you fly, say hello to Piedmont Airlines. Say hello, say hello, hello Piedmont Airlines. Say hello, say hello, hello Piedmont Airlines. You hungry, Ernie? Like a bear. You know what I'm thinking about? Hardy's Big Cheese. Mm. Two pure beef burgers, charbroiled, a whole lot of tangy melted mm. cheese, all hot and juicy. I must be dreaming. You know, I can smell that big cheese. Well, open your eyes, good buddy, and you can see it. <laughs> Bless your warm little heart. Hardy's, best eating in town, up and down and all around. Remember the trips to the country when you were a child? The special people and the home-cooked food that were a part of that experience? That home-cooked goodness is still yours in every loaf of Boss Bread. Aren't you glad that some things never change? See the Blue Devil students anticipating the victory. Their team leads by 10 with 23 seconds of playing time left, and the Blue Devils will have the ball out of bounds under the parapet basket. Denard to Bender. Graham checking Bender as he brings it front court anyway. You know, you wonder sometimes why Maryland would call a timeout like that. Foul on Graham. And uh, you never know when that sort of thing will help you in the next basketball game by calling timeout like that. Somebody says, well, they haven't got a chance. 23 seconds, 10 points down. But you might as well use every minute that you've got in preparation for your next game, even though you may have lost. Bender's at the free throw line. He will have one and one. Bender, Banks, Denard, Jaminski, Taylor getting together at the free throw line. It's Bender's first up for the free throw line. He has four points in the ball game. Pretty good shooter. You said it. Has he's, another opportunity. He's tough. He's tough at that foul line. Here's Morrison coming into the ball game, replacing Banks for the Blue Devils. Banks leaves with six points 
Only one field goal. Look at Denard with the rebound. Bilney's got it now for the Terrapins. Morley, 10 seconds left to play. Morley passing it to Manning, who was breaking for the basket. It was tapped away, though, by a Blue Devil. Manning thought he had made a bad pass. He didn't make a bad pass. It was simply tapped away. Morley to King. King in the lane and up. Bilney tips it in. Four points now for John Bilney, and that's the ball game. The Blue Devils come up with a nine-point victory. They led by 13 at halftime, and they win it by nine here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Who is our Holly Farms player of the game? Well, we will tell you about that. Uh, Bones, you ready to turn it over? I'm ready. Nolan won the ball game. Nice uh, rather, Duke won the ball game, 87-78. You ready? Let's, let's turn our cards over together. Ready? All right. One, Same time. two, three. All right. Jim Spinarkel, unanimously, the Holly Farms player of the game. He got 27 points, played an excellent floor game. Let's, uh, let's take a look at one of his actions today. Here's a beautiful play. You see Spinarkel as he passed the ball to Bender. Now you're going to see him as he lobs the ball, not for an alley hoop, because you see they were trying to guard. Jeminski had no idea that Spinarco would do what he did, and of course he put the ball right in the basket. Not real clean, but good enough. And the Holly Farm Scholarship Award, a $1,000 grant, is presented through the office of the ACC Commissioner to the school of the outstanding player or players of the game, as chosen by the game announcers. Today, the outstanding player of the game is Jim Spinarco of Duke University. Let's take a look at Banks and Bender in action also. Well, now here are two fellows that broke away, and of course Bender looked like he had an easy layout, but he was contested there by Marley, as you see. So it's necessary for someone else to come down the floor, and it happened to be Banks, and he took it and put that ball through the basket. Bernardo followed in the scoring column for the Blue Devils. His 27 points led both teams by Mike Jeminski with 22. Kenny Denard got 13, almost double his seven-point average for the season. Dean Banks was somewhat under his average. He got six points, averages 15 a game. Vince Taylor collected eight points. He averages three points a game for the Blue Devils. And Steve Gray, who averages one, got four. So the Blue Devils got some balanced scoring from some unexpected sources, in a matter of speaking. Harold Morrison got a couple of points, which is better than his less than one point per game average. See the final score there, 87-78 Duke. We'll be right back after this message. to take this opportunity to thank Director of Athletics Tom Butters, head basketball coach Bill Foster and his staff, and Sports Information Director Tom Mickle from Duke University for their help in today's telecast from the University of Maryland. Our thanks go to Director of Athletics Carl James, head basketball coach Lefty Drizel and his staff, and Sports Information Director Jack Zane. Our thanks also to our stage manager, Ed Bettingfield. And let us remind you again about the ACC Women's Tournament next weekend in Raleigh. It will be held Thursday through Saturday at Reynolds Coliseum on the North Carolina State campus. Tickets are available for $10 from the Coliseum box office in Raleigh. Zip 27650. $10 for tickets to see some of the great basketball players, some of the great women basketball players of the nation in action in that ACC tournament. North Carolina State uh, with the uh, host and with an outstanding team. What's the secret of this ball game today, Bones, the nine-point victory for the Blue Devils? I think it was the consistency of the Duke basketball team, led, of course, by uh, Jim Spinarkel. But, but, of course, you've always got Jeminski in the middle there. They're a very difficult ball club to beat. Maryland making mistakes, I think, is the thing that put them in the hole and the things that they have to work on. They're a good basketball team. Make no mistake about that, as are all the teams in the league. But they made a beautiful comeback today and showed me some signs that they are able to have patience and that in time, and this is February, I'll say again. Barry Gibson and Garrett Greg Manning got 15 points apiece for the Terrapins. Ernest Graham got 14. Albert King got 14. Be sure to join us for our next Atlantic Coast Conference game on Tuesday, February 6th. Virginia meets Duke here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Game time is 9 o'clock. Our final score again here today was the Duke Blue Devils 87, 
The Maryland Terrapin 78, the Blue Devils led by the 27 points by Jim Spinarkel and the 22 points by Mike Jaminski, exhibiting a powerful apart. This has been a C.D. Chesley production.